Next up, we've got another UFC debutante, Eduarda Mora, taking on Montserrat Conejo Ruiz. Speaking of big plus money KO props, this time the bookies did not rob me. I was able to cash Jacqueline Amarim by KO, uh, and that was plus 1,600 last time out. Very good bet. Very happy with that one, how it turned out. Jacqueline Amarim, I didn't want to sell my stock on her after she lost her first fight. I said, you know, she didn't look good there. But I thought she spent her cardio too early trying to get the finish. I thought that she probably um, came close to, to getting it, but couldn't quite seal the deal. Had a cardio dump. I didn't think it was going to last. She came back out and looked very good in her last fight. And she beat the absolute tar out of this woman. And that was in August. Um, you know, Mora is a girl that signed on the Contender Series after uh, week two. And I'm going to give you guys just a little bit of color here. Um, you know, Jonathan Almeida, he went to the interview with her. He said, this is my teammate. You know, this is another girl that you got to pay attention to. Galpa de Luta. She's coming. She's getting better. She's she's real. Dana, you have to sign her. That's what she said. And when you look at, at uh, Mora and her background, she's gotten a lot of fights in very quickly. In a short amount of time, she's been very active. She's been working on her ground game. She's been working on her Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Purple belt on the mat. Last time out, I bet on her uh, on Contender Series via sub. I bet on the fight ends via sub. Uh, both of those were around the plus 300 mark and a little bit over in the case of Mora by sub specifically, we were able to cash there. Um, very good opportunity. I felt like, and you know, easy money in the end of the day, Mora has a vicious ground game, especially for women's MMA standards. She had a big size advantage in her last fight and she leveraged it guys. She took her to the mat. She beat her up from the top half guard. And by the 92nd mark, there's a massive golf ball size hematoma on the size of her opponent's head. Um, you know, she's beating her up to a pulp and then she eventually secures the submission, but this is an aggressive, violent woman. Um, and I think that Montserrat Conejo, unfortunately, it's just not UFC level. Uh, that's a personal opinion of mine. She does train with the, uh, Dallas Fort Worth, uh, I believe, or excuse me, uh, it's 10th planet to get to somewhere. Uh, I don't have my notes, uh, all in front of me, but I do have it written down. So People on the Patreon, y'all can refer back, but otherwise I will make sure I have that right for Thursday. In any case, though, she's just a girl that's training 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. I think she trains mostly alongside of her significant other. Um, you know, I haven't been very impressed with her UFC game. I thought she was going to get audited by Emma Rimi. She absolutely did. You know, what do, what do we know about her? She's damn tough. You know, Conejo is tough as hell. When she got dropped by Amanda Lemos and went like face down, she tried to get back up, but she got stopped. Because she got hurt really bad. Her chin wasn't there on the feet against Lemos, who's got that power. How about on the mat? I thought Amarim stopped the fight in the second round. Referee wasn't interested in stopping it there. She beat the absolute tar out of her for the third round, looking for subs, looking for ground and pound. And again, this is only four months ago. She took an absolute hellacious beating, just like Angela Hill, you know. That's the one thing where I always want to see, did you get enough time to recover? Let's see how much time Angela Hill has taken off. So her fight with Mackenzie Dern was in May, right? So she's had five plus months to recover. She's given herself a little bit of that time. Montserrat Conejo got absolutely brutalized, um, you know, four months ago um, or less. It's just, I, I don't like that spot for her. Um, the UFC hasn't done her many favors. This is going to be a third Brazilian in a row um, for Montserrat Conejo. She beat Cheyenne Velismas, And I think that... Uh, I think that that was a spot that pissed off the UFC, right? Number one, all the drama, all the bullshit. I'll follow you home, bitch, spitting on each other and whatever the hell they were doing. It was just low class and, and not very good. Um, on top of that, the fight sucked the horn, right? And it was very low level. So you look at what has happened since. I think they're matching her up intentionally with girls that they want to put over, with girls that they'd like to see advance. And they know that Conejo has a limited skill set. She's got the scarf hold, but she's tiny, guys. She's very small for the division. And Mora had a size advantage in her last fight. She's going to have an even bigger size advantage in this fight. So I think that this is going to be Mora's coming out party. Uh, Jelton Almeida said, please, UFC, put my friend Mora on the contract. Put my friend Mora in the UFC with me. Have her on the Brazil card. Jelton got his wish. So now let's see what happens. But I think that Eduarda Mora is going to get this fight to the ground. I think she's going to finish it uh, big time. Uh, shout out to free UFC bet picks. Uh, asking for the uh, little hand fighting gestures, my man. I appreciate you big time. Um, so Frey versus Ruiz after this fight, Apex co-main event to the moon. Pepe, I'm, I'm waiting for that announcement too. But she's one and two in the UFC right now. I think she's running that record to one and three. And I think she's getting finished. 
Um, you know, I'm going to wait and see what the prop lines look like, but I like Eduarda Mora, and I, I think that she is going to get the win.